What place does theology, worldview, and evangelism have in Christian fiction? Find out next on the Christian Arts and Entertainment Podcast. Today we have Travis Perry, author, editor, and small press publisher joining us here, and he's going to help us talk through the question of what place does theology have in fiction. Welcome, Travis. Thank you for joining me. Hey, thank you, Kevin. It's nice to have, uh, nice to be here. Thanks. Why don't you tell, uh, tell all our viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself and your background and uh, um, uh, how, how, what you've been doing as far as in the industry is concerned. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, Travis Perry, as Kevin said, I'm I'm a owner of a small publisher, Bub Bear Publications. Um, my interest in speculative fiction uh, started out because I was mainly a short story writer and re- contributed to anthologies, and I wanted to publish anthologies. So I started publishing short story anthologies at first, and I wanted to do it from a Christian perspective. I felt those didn't really get uh, maybe the respect that other like novels get and so forth well they, they still don't but uh, but anyway but uh, now I'm also publishing novels and and a, a bit of nonfiction uh, by Christian authors that relates to speculative fiction um, my interest is uh, you know well I'm trying to do things that aren't already being done and I will put my talk about that in a minute my background though is I'm uh, uh, I, at the church I attend is the Southern Baptist Church um, I do have a uh, master's degree in history. Uh, I'm an army reserve officer. Uh, I have written a couple of novels, but currently they're unpublished. Um, I'm mostly a short story writer and, um, but I probably now am more important as a publisher. I, I write a weekly bo- um, post for speculative faith, uh, which is a pretty well-known resource for people that, uh, that follow Christian speculative fiction. And that's me. Excellent. Um, so we, I wanted to talk to you about uh, theology uh, and fiction. And everything there's there's at least at least on my my account there's been this perceived sort of this tension about what Christian fiction is supposed to be. Is, is it supposed to be evangelistic? Is it supposed to just be like regular fiction, but with a Christian worldview? Is it is it uh, uh, just a, a Christian writing fiction to the best of their ability for the glory of God? You know, there's all there's at least three or four different ways people approach Christian fiction. Um, so those who think fiction should always have an evangelistic message tend to have a, a sort of a, a louder voice as far as um, retail is concerned. You know, you, at least in my experience, the those who are buying Christian fiction are looking for those that are, are, are uh, that stuff is that's very dogmatic um when you go to a bookstore and you look at christian fiction on the shelves at least it, it has been in the past um i understand some of that is beginning to change could, could you speak to that a little bit sure i mean uh, well if we think about the cba the christian booksellers association and books associated with them um it was really typical to have a pretty strong evangelistic message i mean a book was treated uh, there was a couple expectations for a book. I mean, one, that it would be clean fiction, and two, pretty much that would present the gospel message at some point. And it's a view of fiction that fiction is supposed to be useful. If it's not useful, if it doesn't contain a, a specific message, then it shouldn't exist, basically, we could say. But the fact that CBA has folded, uh, they went bankrupt, and uh, a lot of Christian booksellers are, um, there's a CRA, a Christian Retailers Association, that's kind of trying to re- associate, uh, replace it. So I'm not saying that they don't exist at all, but in fact, Christian book selling or the selling of, of, of Christian band, brand fiction is in trouble, we could say. And so the, the, the attitude, of, at least among speculative fiction writers, from what I see, more and more people are just writing, you know, because they feel it's uh, what God wants them to do, and they should write for the glory of God, and and, uh, and, there, and probably there's more of a move, especially among, you know, speculative fiction. What I mean is, you know, fantasy, science fiction, and horror. People are uh, in, independently published. Probably, probably the closest thing there's a publisher called Enclave uh, that uh, publishes science fiction, fantasy that has some of the same editorial standards, you could say, of, of CBA books. And that's the closest thing we have to having a. Uh, in speculative fiction, a, a standard where people expect evangelism, but but the enclave books don't uh, necessarily have a strong evangelistic me- message. They are reliably clean, 
uh, but they aren't necessarily strongly evangelistic. So it's almost this, this issue that was an issue, you know, 10 years ago is kind of disappearing as an issue. Well, well that's, that's good to hear. Um, so uh, if, if there's no evangelistic message, of course, if we, if we're talking about evangelism, then we, then we really need to dig into what, what the theology of that is. And, and so if, if that's, that's not really the issue anymore, we, we really need to shift the conversation towards worldview. Right. Um, so if, if Christians are writing fiction, you would expect the body of their work to, to at the very least express a Christian worldview. That, that's sort of what you would expect. Um, but I have read recently published novels that very much towed the line of, 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 of expressing worldviews other than Christian worldviews and, and supposedly from Christian writers. So uh, how, how do we, how do we keep from uh, in, in our cre- taking creative license and trying to create good fiction? How do we keep from accidentally crossing the line when we're, when we're trying to not push Christian agenda so much and just write good fiction? Sometimes they pull back too far and wipe out their entire worldview from their fiction. I, I've read several books have, have, have done that. How do we keep from doing that and still be able to present that Christian worldview without being so dogmatic in evangelism? Well, it turns out that I, I have a strong opinion about this, and it's a little bit non-standard, <laughs> so I'm sorry, but this is how it, how it is. But I, I feel that uh, some of the great works of uh, science fiction, I, I'm mainly was a science fiction reader. I also read fantasy, but among Christian writers, fantasy is probably significantly more popular than science fiction. But I'm a science fiction guy at heart, even though I also like fantasy. And in science fiction, some of the greatest works of science fiction were very overtly like message fiction, but we love them anyway. So uh, War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, <clears throat> uh, maybe it's not so very overtly, but it's an anti-colonialism message is what he meant. He made to compare aliens invading you know, Europe of the time to what it would feel like to be in, uh, invaded by colonialists. And that's, he, he wasn't too, uh, he was a little subtle, but not totally subtle. And there's other ones like 1984, not subtle at all. It's a message against totalitarianism. And then uh, Gattaca, the movie, is a movie uh, against uh, genetic engineering and it's message fiction. It's very blatantly message message fiction, but it's so well done. You love it anyway. And that's what I feel that Christians should be trying to do. I think we should be writing our message openly, overtly, but nonetheless do it very well. And I don't think those things are necessarily incompatible, but I think the history of the strongly uh, evangelical fiction gave us the idea that if it's overtly Christian, then it's bad. And so a lot of Christians have steered away from overt uh, messaging and then become so subtle that is there a Christian message here at all is a question. And sometimes uh, some people uh, carrying the name Christian writer for whatever purpose, some of their works are very questionable if they're actually Christian at all. But, but anyway, so, but my opinion on that is one of the ways we should be seeking uh, ways to approach things in a uniquely Christian way. So um, one of the ways to do that was maybe strongly Christian characters uh, that have strong faith. Uh, That doesn't necessarily mean that we won't write things that are graphic because graphic things happen to actual Christians in the world or, but we look for certain situations like, you know, historical scenarios, Uh, you know, like a handmaid's tale is a, is a, um, a well-known, very specifically anti-Christian message. We should be able to write stories that are, uh, you know, similar. Have worldviews that really affect us. There's some authors that are doing that that are Christian authors, but um, but for, far too often it seems like uh, the the trend is becoming just to be so subtle that well, is there anything Christian here? And there is a problem, a worldview, I agree. So I could say more on this topic, but I guess I'm going to turn it back to you and see what your response is to what I've said. So <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's two things you, you mentioned right there that I really do want to hit on, if we got time to do that. So the first one, uh, let's just talk about the, the you, you talk about, there's, there can be a question of whether or not they're even Christian at all. Um, and so there's this, this trust from a reader, if they if they they hear of a, a writer who's a Christian writer, so they, they right. trust that this Christian writer is going to present to them some uh, a a a, uh, um, a a Christian message, a right. basic Christian message that doesn't doesn't stray too far uh, liberally in, in either any direction. Right. 
But what we're finding is, is that definition of who a Christian writer is is so broad. Right. The Christian writers are from all kinds of different denominations. You have, you have writers that are, are calling themselves Christian writers that um, uh, sort of uh, fundamental Christian groups, um, a little more conservative groups like, like Southern Baptist, for instance. I'm right. also a Southern Baptist. We would look at these groups and, and, and really question whether or not they, they come in under the umbrella of actually being Christian. Of course, we're talking about uh, Mormons, Christian mysticism. Um, right. There, a, a couple of years ago at a, a writer's conference, I believe you and a few others took issue with, with a, a rather well-known Christian writer for espousing Christian mysticism in his right. keynote speech. Do you mind me mentioning him by name? Uh, is that okay? Uh, uh, <laughs> or would you rather not mention him? Uh, it's uh, that, Well, uh, you know what? If you mention it, I won't stop you. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you know, um, Ted, Ted Decker, who is a very well-known writer. In fact, maybe one of the most successful, uh, arguably the most successful Christian writer of speculative fiction in terms of sales uh, or certainly influence. And uh, we uh, at a writer's conference and he said some things that were uh, uh, disturbingly uh, unchristian, you know, and he's talking about that uh, he knew a, a gentleman who uh, was meditating, who was not a Christian that talked to Jesus and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, and, and said some other things that were you know, really questionable about uh, mysticism. And, and, the, and the thing about it is I'm not necessarily entirely, there is such a thing as Christian mysticism. I'm not opposed to the idea of someone seeking a mystic uh, experience of Christ, but you have to say that there is such a, you know, there are things that we don't include, like, you know, that anybody can have those experiences equally, you know, and that those experiences are equal to what the Bible says. Those are, that's problematic, right? So that's, that's something that a Christian, um, you know, I know, Kevin, we don't have anybody policing us. So, I mean, one of the things that uh, the CBA used to do is, you know, kind of police things. And now that it's kind of died, but it pleased things in a way that was unnecessary, if you ask me, you know, if you ask me, and I think you agree, that they had insisted on a standard that was too rigid. And but now they've kind of broken down. And so now it's like anything goes, it seems, or to a certain degree. Not entirely, but I think there is still an expectation if someone says Christian, that they're gonna write clean fiction. And I think that's still true. Uh, even with Mr. Decker and some other writers, we might have questions about what they have to say. Um, but, uh, you know, and, I, and please, um, what I said, I want to be clear to your uh, viewers that I'm not giving a blanket um, condemnation of everything Mr. Decker ever wrote because of this, these statements. It just, they're just kind of troubling, and you should be aware of it if you're going to read Mr. Decker, that he has ideas that are um, kind of not completely Christian or not orthodox uh, right. view of Christianity. Wor worldview is certainly going to come out in your writing, and yeah. um, uh, readers need to be aware that just because somebody says they're a Christian doesn't mean they're going to uh, yeah. espouse a, a conservative worldview in everything they write. So right. a certain amount of discernment needs to right. be taken. Um, and along those same veins, we talk, you talk about clean fiction, uh, sex, violence, uh, language, and stuff like that. Uh, we've seen more of that enter into "quote unquote" Christian fiction. Um, whereas, you know, readers they hear Christian fiction, they're expecting something clean. They say, "Oh, this is a Christian writer. Maybe I can give this to my my 11 year old and my 12 year or 10 year old to read." And it's 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 kind of graphic at times. You know, my own books. I, I tell people. They hear I'm a Christian writer. I'm like, don't if, if your kid is under 14, don't give them to them. Yeah. You know, um, so how how do readers navigate all of those things? Well, I, <clears throat> Kevin, it'd be nice if we had kind of like, uh, you know, an association uh, that, that was uh, built out of Christian writers and publishers. And that we kind of did a pleased ourselves and did a rating system like you see, you know, for some sort of thing. So people could know what they're getting. Uh, we really don't have that. Um, I've thought about such things and it would be nice to have that. Uh, I've thought about I've, that too, I've, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like a solution, but nobody's really um, hit on it. Though I think the majority of 
when pr people label something Christian, mostly they're clean, but there, it does seem like certain people are trying to just get away with as much as they can get away with. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm trying to say is with risque content, they're trying to push the envelope, which uh, they might feel they have an artistic or stylistic reason to do it. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm just saying that you can't be sure just because someone says Christian that the, the, the fiction will be clean. And even uh, the definition of what is clean might be a little different. Some people might accept a few you know, swear words or whatever, or someone might, uh, myself, the, uh, in an unpublished novel, written some pretty graphic descriptions of combat. Uh, and I would say, though, otherwise, it's clean fiction. But, but anyway, I think a rating system would help, but uh, we don't have it. Uh, maybe we should label our own books, those who are producing books, and uh, do our best to trust just, as you said you do, let people know uh, what to expect and uh, that don't expect it to be clean. And this is what's in it. So transparency is part of the answer, but I'm afraid to say that people who are navigating um, into our realm of fiction, um, you know, have, should probably do some research on the author uh, that they're um, that they're interested in, and not just assume that everybody is good. So. Right. So we're we're entering a time where um, where there are no gatekeepers. Right. There, there's there's no no oversight in Christian fiction. Uh, which is a little unique. Uh, Christian publishing has sort of followed the trends of Christian music by about right. five, six, seven years behind what Christian music is doing. But this is a little unique. I, I think we've sort of taken, taken a step aside from what Christian music has done. Christian music still has gatekeepers. The writing sort of right. doesn't anymore. Um, not, so, not, well, they do, but fewer of them are. Or not as effective uh, as we would put it but yeah um well we aren't like christian music i mean you would, it did seem like for a while that we would be like christian music but it has changed things have changed we're not we're not the same um for though for what it's worth i don't think we're going to really come into our own in, as christian storytellers until it becomes routine to make uh, movies because i think the majority of the public consume their stories and you know, consume, it sounds uh, whatever, uh, but it's, it's the right word. I think they consume their stories in the form of movies or television or series visually rather than um, by the written word. And there's a minority that of course love written books, but I think if we can, as Christian storytellers trans transition into film in one way or another, and the costs of that are getting lower and lower with, you know, advanced computer technology, I, th I think then, then we will really, be like the music industry and that will be a cultural voice uh, of uh, some significance. But I think right now, most of the public reading or most of the public who consume speculative fiction or like speculative fiction or don't even know about us. Uh, I'm afraid that's true. Yeah, especially the, in the speculative side, the sci-fi yeah. fantasy. Um, yeah. It's such a uh, almost an underground <laughs> movement in the Christian right, publishing it industry, but it's, it's gaining traction. You, you see more and more come along. Um, Travis, um, uh, so there's, there's this trend that I, I keep hearing about in the Christian music industry where um, musicians will try to break in to the music industry through Christian music because it's, it's the, the standards aren't quite as high. And we talk about right. standards in fiction. Um, it almost always, it almost seems that Christian fiction is, is in a lot of ways subpar to secular fiction. Do we, do we find a lot of these issues are, are in fact people trying to break into the writing industry using Christian fiction as a vehicle because the, the standards aren't quite as high? Do you, is, there, is there something similar going on? <laughs> Well, I think that might be true to a degree. I think it might be true too, but we're not exactly uh, a really successful platform. So in the Christian music industry, you have a really successful uh, music generating platform and maybe the standards aren't as, as tough, but it, you could go, well, I'm going to definitely make money for sure as a Christian artist, you know, so maybe I'll pretend to be Christian for that purpose. But um, we're, I mean, and again, I'm talking about speculative fiction that we've been, we're not really making a lot of money, to tell you the truth. None no, of us are. No, we're not. Some, so somebody, some people are making a little bit more than others, but generally speaking, we're not making a lot of money. So it's not quite that, um, it, but it is, it, it is. Um, maybe maybe it's, it's just a that. recognition thing. It's easier to get recognized. 
Yeah, um, because it's it's a bit of that. There's for some people that I think that's working that they that they built a solid fan base of you know 500 people or whatever that you that they got from Christian associations. I think that works for a few people, but uh, mostly uh, I, I think one of the things that's kind of driving the the people who are not entirely Christian, I guess, in the way of looking at things, I think it's they're imitating, you know, secular franchises. And I think that's happened. That happened in Christian music too, at a certain point where there were people that were, you know, basically their style was exactly the same as some secular band, just a little bit different. And I think, and, and you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? So I don't know if that's so much true anymore. Christian music work uh, came into its own. Uh, I'm not an expert on Christian music, but I think that's less, there's less direct imitation in Christian Christian music than there used to be. But I think that's the thing. I think somebody's a fan of a, a certain particular uh, franchise. Uh, let's say maybe they're a fan of Marvel superheroes and they want to write their own superheroes, but they just a couple of things about the Marvel they don't like. So they're keeping, you know, 95%. Well, that happens to be the worldview uh, that they're uh, copying still has things that uh, aren't, aren't very Christian, if that makes sense. I, th I think that's more of a factor than trying to just, you know, um, to hack into the Christian system. Right. So how do, how do writers, um, Christian writers, get to that level to where, where they're producing uh, quality that is on par with, with some of the best stuff you see in the secular market? I, I don't know, Kevin. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm working on it um, myself and the, and the things I publish. But uh, but I mean, obviously, uh, we can't afford to be uh, isolated from the uh, the secular publishing world entirely. We have to know what they're doing and be aware of it. Uh, I I, th I think though sometimes there are people who are writing really good stuff that is on a secular par that isn't getting credit, and uh, there there are some great writers among us. Unfortunately, there are also some mediocre writers, and sometimes the mediocre writers uh, are louder and, and do better for whatever yeah. reason. But there are some great, there are great writers, I, I, and I could name a couple that I think are, are really good. One, I mean, one of my personal favorite science fiction writers is Kerry Neitz, and uh, I don't, uh, wouldn't say that everything he writes is maybe on the same par as the greatest science fiction writers of all time, but he's a good, solid, you know, science fiction writer, yes. a good writer. And I would recommend him to anybody. Um, and then a maybe lesser known was uh, really for her Shatter World trilogy, Lelia Rose Foreman, I would recommend to anybody. And I also uh, published that, that trilogy as, uh, as a, as a one volume version she has her she's published it separately as three volumes. I published it as one volume, but um, I think it's a great story. Um, but, you know, we, we have a long ways to go to find those quality stories. Uh, you know, the kind of thing I'm talking about, the 1984, the, you know, the um, War of the Worlds, where someone has an idea that has just got Christianity wrapped up within the idea. And 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 you don't have to hide it. It's there. It's, it's inherent. It's part of the DNA of the story. Uh, that's what I think science fiction needs, Christian science fiction needs. And I don't see a lot of it. Um, and that yeah, I don't know how to get there, Kevin. I know we need to yeah. work on it, and I know we need to be, you know, not experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, we'll try to get Travis back to answer one more question in a second. Yeah, I, I was saying something about, uh, um, I don't think that we can, uh, there's certain authors I recommend, and I think you heard me mention the, them, Lily Rose Foreman and uh, Carrie Neitz. But I was saying that we just need to strive to do the best we can uh, and, and in particular in science fiction, those big ideas that I was talking about, things like, like a war of the worlds with Christian message worked into its DNA. We need yeah. to satisfy with you know just producing something, uh, whatever it is that just happens to be Christian. It's it's uh, difficult, um, I think, um, you know, to strive for perfection in any field. But I think that's what we need to do is to uh, write the best, produce the best that we can. And I, I certainly feel that I have, I publish some good stories, but not everything I publish is equally good. And uh, so it's it's tough to to find the, the that right um, level of quality. Yeah, but we need to work on it. Um, yeah, sure. you mentioned uh, Carrie Nates, uh, Lee Rose Foreman. Um, I, I want to shout out to uh, P.A. Baines, who wrote what may be uh, the the best Christian right. science fiction, one of the best science fictions I've ever read, Alpha Redemption. I shout out that every chance I get is phenomenal. And this is a writer that kind of got discouraged and sort of dropped out because – you know, the book didn't do much, um, but it is phenomenal. It is, it is up there on par with, with some of the best. 
Um, so we definitely need to, you know, shout out and make these names known if we're going to uh, raise our quality overall. Um, Travis, uh, uh, rather than, than continuing, I see you're having some technical difficulties. We're just going to end it right here. Thank you so much for um, joining me and uh, sharing your insights in, into the Christian publishing world. And um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this again sometime. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Sorry for the glitches, but I uh, appreciate you talking to me. It's, uh, it's been a privilege, and uh, you have a great day. You, to you too. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. This has been the Christian Arts and Entertainment Podcast with author, musician, and worship pastor, Kevin Newsom. Thank you for joining us today, for your comments, and for subscribing. See you next time.